My name's Tom. I'm a founder of Artisanal Technologies, and uh, I work as special project leads at Parity Technologies, which uh, powers the uh, Polkadot ecosystem. Um, so I just want to talk to you today about something that we're building um, currently, um, which is uh, Archisonal. And cool, there we go. So just before I get into it, I just want to kind of give a little bit of an overview about my inspiration to kind of start this company. Um, actually came from this consortium right here. This is my first little foray into blockchain technologies a few years ago, and it, um, it, it really got me interested. Um, I was working as a surveyor at the time, um, and I worked as a quantity surveyor for uh, about six years, um, working for main contractors and then uh, development firms, and then finally for um, uh, an MMC consultancy in, um, in London. So uh, I'll let you read this, the sort of current state of the construction industry. Um, Mark Farmer um, is my old boss, and he wrote this in 2016 about uh, modernize or die, and this demonstrates or well, displays the current kind of issues that the construction industry are facing right now. So I won't, I won't read them out, I'll let uh, everybody read it, but kind of my inspiration for this is, is kind of twofold. Um, it started with um, in about 2017 um, when the Grenfell fire happened. Uh, for those of you that don't know, this was a big tower fire in London, um, external cladding caught on fire and um, unfortunately do dozens um, of people lost their lives. And I followed the um, I followed the investigation into it quite closely and you know people people should be in prison for it just being completely honest but uh because it is corporate manslaughter but you know as the uh, investigation progressed uh the the, the laptop which had uh, a lot of the uh, cladding details on it went missing and so that was a big hole in the investigation so yeah, I mean, read into that what you want. So it got me thinking about how we share our data and how um, what the fairest way to share data is. And I think when we're talking about the buildings that we're living in on a day to day basis, uh, you know, that needs that needs to be open source and that needs to be on a distributed ledger and not just on a single machine. So that was that. And then I started to think about what can we do to make cash flow better for consultants I sat in hundreds of meetings over the years with architects and engineers and you know in in my opinion they're the, they're usually the smartest people in the room on construction jobs you know they're the people that design the buildings but what i observed is it's very difficult for them to cash flow properly you know it's typically depending on where you are in the world you're looking at maybe between five to fifteen percent of the total construction costs um, as a consultancy fee for an architect but obviously a lot of construction projects overrun with time and uh, time and money. So uh, what I was seeing is that due to bottlenecks and I mean, Mamita uh, alluded to it earlier about dependencies on other disciplines, uh, it, the problems were kind of snowball. And what you'd end up having is uh, a lot of difficulty in how to uh, in how to properly cash flow your work. So Again, just a quick diagram there for the current state of the construction industry and why costs overrun. Okay, so there we go. Cool. Right. So uh, it got me thinking about Archisonal, right? So Archisonal, um, in its simplest form, is a marketplace for uh, designers and consultants in the AEC industry. Um, and this will really be used to leverage block blockchain technology uh, so the drawings. Uh, design documents and hopefully in the future contractual documents can be represented on chain, fully transparent. Um, and the main goal of it is to optimize cash flow, introduce a creator economy into the industry, uh, and then hopefully long term goal um, is to really kind of create a transparent arbitration mechanism for when things do go wrong. So there's a little bit more there just about how blockchain technology can help. So again, I won't read it verbatim, uh, you, you can read it there, but what I find really interesting um, about this project is, you know, architects, you know, let's take Bjark Ingels, for example, right? probably one of the most famous architects in, um, um, in modern day architecture. If he designed something when he was at university on a piece of paper and he put it on chain or whatever, uh, how much would that be worth today? That becomes a collector's item, right? And 
if we could create a mechanism where we can mint NFTs on chain that represent architectural designs, engineering designs, we also give architects an opportunity to build their profile as well. You know, so it, over a period of time, that could become uh, a collector's item, for example. So if you can, if we can then code in royalties into um, into the sale of these designs, then what we're doing there is creating this kind of passive income flow for architects. We're also encouraging them to design the stuff that they want to design, and then the people that want to buy it can buy it. And then the beauty of having using this as NFTs is that you have token gated access. So the idea here is that I'll go and buy a, a design from Architect X, um, either because A, I just like the design, or B, I want to work with them off chain to design out this building further and you know, hopefully make it into uh, a real life um, project. Cool. So what are we building it on? So we're building it on Polkadot, uh, specifically the A-Star network. So um, for those of you that aren't uh, familiar with Polkadot, and uh, it is, uh, it's, a it's a block space ecosystem. It's a, it's a collection of layer one blockchains um, connected by uh, a relay chain. So effectively, if Ethereum is just a layer one, it's just a kind of a, a single module like that, Polkadot is a circle of various Ethereum layer one type projects coming off this kind of ring in the middle. Um, and what, what that gives is shared security. It's a proof of stake um, protocol. And what this allows for is lower transaction costs, uh, which uh, increases scalability um, and also interoperability as well. So um, ASTAR is uh, a purpose built layer one for uh, decentralized applications. Uh, there are also um, protocols on there for um, decentralized identities, automated payments, etc. So yeah, the idea of this network is that you can interact with different blockchains seamlessly uh, through cross-chain mechanisms um, and you can get all of the functionalities that you need without having to clog up um, and fight for, uh, fight for block space. So, this so we are hoping to launch it on a star on in maybe october november time we are working within the incubator um program at the moment which has been uh very interesting so what is ink so ink is the smart programming language of uh rust so rust is a relatively new programming language anyway uh and the ink ecosystem is very much in its infancy so uh the incubator program is uh designed to really kind of sort of push and promote projects which are going to be in volume basically and transaction volume uh, to the ecosystem it's it's built on the substrate frame framework and that's optimized for polkadot and again it's the scalability the upgradability and the lower fees which make this an attractive prospect uh, when comparing to say working with evm uh, evm solutions um relating this back to uh aec uh, I truly believe if we're going to achieve commercial scale in uh, any uh, way, shape or form, uh, we, need, um, we need assurances that the transaction fees are going to stay relatively low and relatively consistent. We're going to be able to scale uh, without sacrificing decentralization. Um, and I feel that using Inc um, and then deploying it onto uh, ASTAR and Polkadot, that really kind of gives us some security, which perhaps you wouldn't get with uh, with other ecosystems. Okay, cool. So, right, the way that I envision this is that we've got kind of two phases. We've got the, the MVP application, which is being built out at the moment, uh, which is uh, a kind of an open C equivalent, but very much specific for AEC consultants, right? So uh, if you are a designer, you'll be allowed to uh, mint your work on the platform. You'll be allowed to um, scale how much you want the royalties to be for, uh, and then you can interact with uh, the people who are using the platform. Um, and you, again, you have that token gated access um, if you want to create anything off chain. So again, involved there. It's the, pur the purpose of this project is to champion creativity, ingenuity, and reinstate the notion that designers are empowered to design what they want, not what they're told. You know, it's uh, I've worked on development projects over the years, and 
we were building just two up, two down houses. And if they're thinking, you know, let's not let's not marginalize ourselves here. You know, it's obviously there's a need for that. But if you know you're you're taught at university to be a creative, and uh, I just see that this is this could be a way to get it back. So you can see a flow there for how this would work. So connect, connect the wallet, upload the design and whatever um, uh, software that you're using. Uh, it's minting the PSP standard for the uh, for the NFT. So the PSP 3.4 um, standard is the H-star equivalent of an ERC721 ERC token. Uh, and then you have the, uh, the auction process, which runs through it right there. So again, this is relatively similar to uh, the OpenSea model here. Okay. And so the commercial applications, and this is where I really think the value will end up being. Um, yeah, as an industry, we are quite slow to adopt new technologies. Um, I think, you know, we're still thinking that BIM is this, this new crazy thing. It's been around for a while, but I still think, you know, it's, there are, there are uh, maybe historic conceptions about adopting new technologies in the space. So uh, this is why I want for the, the MVP application to be focused at your AI architecture practices, your university students, et cetera, really kind of get the grassroots levels um, interested and demonstrate the value to them. Uh, and then we can work on commercial applications where we can go to big practices and you know, sell this as an um, EDMS, electronic data management system to them. Um, and again, so the difference here would be that you've got, it's the sign off process in when do you accept a design? So. Uh, I'm working, well, I, when I was uh, a QS, I was working in the UK, we used the Reba plan of works. When I uh, am accepting a, a stage three pack of information or a stage four pack of information, there was always a very blurred line between, well, is this stage three, is this stage four, you know? So if we can create an environment where, you know, if I'm transferring an NFT to a client and the metadata uh, is a drawing register, which equates to stage three, if there is a change required, you can uh, the the client can then request the change, and then the change can be integrated. Uh, I mean, you kind of get that iterative process, which is demonstrated there. Um, uh, further to that, if there's any legal disputes, it's all on chain, um, and it should be relatively easy to kind of track where where the backlogs occurred. Why is it? Um, what one of my big bugbears was that it, everything should be black and white, but it, it just never is, and when we're talking about extensions of time or you know liquidated damages it's always it was always a, a you can kind of get to a roundabout way of um, finding out where you need to be and then but you'd never it would never be exact uh, so that is the commercial application there there's just a little uh, shot of kind of what this is going to end up looking like uh, as you can see there you've just got the properties of it the metadata is stored in ipfs um, and again the metadata itself Will just contain what information that the um, that the designer wants to um, uh, include. So uh, that is really what we're working towards now. Um, there is some information there about uh, me. If you want to learn anything about the project, please just drop me an email. Um, we're always looking to collaborate, um, especially at the moment as we're ramping up towards deployment. Uh, so yeah, uh, and that is the and that's the company LinkedIn. So. That's everything. Thank you for your time and I look forward to any questions in a bit.